Hello, Peace Fiends. My name is Bora, and I am a energy reader, multi-dimensional channel, and the Peace Healer has agreed to help me spread my work a little bit. Calling you a Peace Fiend because, you know, the Peace Dealer, Peace Fiend, I think that's really funny. But if you don't find it funny, I'm so sorry. I have a weird sense of humor. So here I'm going to read your energy, but centering around your rising sign because in esoteric astrology, your ascendant slash your rising sign is your gateway towards ascension and following the higher traits of each of your ascendant signs is going to really balance out your whatever other complex you have going on as a human. So in attempt to kind of help you highlight those qualities and have you focus a little bit more on your ascendant than your sun sign or your moon sign as you might usually do uh, that is my desire so looking at energy and looking at your complex which is the astrological sign and without this body of astrology we wouldn't have this experience of time right because they're the ones that kind of fragment this timeless continuum into having with their electromagnetic fields I'm kind of warping that timelessness into this structure so it definitely is valid and people who don't understand the val validity of these planetary bodies I, I don't know I feel bad for them water rising welcome to your reading for october i'm gonna get straight into your reading this reading is intended for people whose ascendant signs are in water so cancer pisces scorpio i'm gonna get into your reading and as i should have explained in the intro which i would have been wearing a different outfit probably it's a different day um it's because in esoteric astrology your ascendant sign and acquiring the higher states of your ascendant sign is your gateway to graceful ascension so let's see what, whoa, what's going on with you? Oh my goodness, you're just like jumping all over the place, really. Calm down, you calm down, you need to calm down a little bit. <laughs> I'm just joking, it's okay. It's okay to react however the hell you want to react. It's really my hope that eventually, you know, going through these cycles and really identifying with your rising sign as much as you identify with your sun sign. So if everybody were asked the question, what's your sign? I hope that eventually you'll be like, oh, I'm a Cancer rising or Pisces rising or Scorpio rising instead of just being like, oh, I'm, I'm a Leo sun or whatever, whatever your sign is, you know, well, you know what I mean? I hope that. I can play a small role in doing that. Oops. Dealing with some sort of a heartbreak, and this shouldn't come as something that is new to you. You're definitely um, learning to cultivate this final enlightened perspective on all the different heartbreaks that had come in your life. So, a tool that's really, really, really necessary for you to um, have readily available in the back of your mind all day every day for this next month I would say is the violet flame and the more you invoke it kind of and if you can do like astral traveling and, and things like that even lucid dreaming if you can or uh, remote viewing actually would be the best in remote influencing if you can go into the temple of the violet flame your violet flame game will exponentially increase like you know how when you play video games 
you have hits and the hits get stronger when you evolve it's the kind of the same thing with your invocation of things like the violet flame if you can strengthen your relationship with this template that exists etherically with saint germain the ascended master saint germain eventually you'll notice that whenever you invoke a violet flame in your aura or in a place it gets so powerful so uh, it's something that i would like to recommend and i'm actually sending you violet flame right now with my invocation so hope that you can feel this the reason the reason why this is in your underlying energy and you're learning to integrate this from a very enlightened perspective like really really taking in the the energies of why you went through so many heartbreaks like especially i guess three would be a good number to reflect upon three main heartbreaks it in terms of romance romantic relationships or just general relationships and the patterns would have been repeating themselves since your incarnation on earth so whether that started out from your family your parents your siblings or whatever friends who had broken your heart and it repeat themselves over and over through romantic relationships career work relationships all of those all of those relationships had put you in a place where you know you had once lost the full authority of who you are your sovereignty and your sense of your original blueprint in which you came here to transmit um but you're coming into power because even though this is your underlying energy i want you to see that the main energy for you is the empress which is that ultimate confidence ultimate restoration of your self-worth and ultimate self-love actually and it's crossed by this lover's card so for me personally as an energy reader i always view the lover's card and the two of cups and twin flame soulmate energy first and foremost internally that it's a representation presentation of the relationship that you have with your human self or your lower self lower self and your higher self so when you're in a harmonious integration between your human experience and your higher self and you're constantly tuned into the higher levels of your mind then that will manifest as really fulfilling relationships whether that's romantic or friendships or whatever but when you're the kind of person who ignores all the signs from the universe and just neglects that there is a higher self that's always 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 guiding you in a loving gentle voice of intuition um then you're gonna have all these tumultuous relationships and if you don't believe in yourself and things like this you know you have to believe in yourself from a place of you believe in your higher self so if you're doubtful about that also then you're going to manifest things that are relationships that are really reflecting that you're doubtful of your higher power but you're not there like you're at a place where this is coming to a full integration and as a result you're really coming to this beautiful like i, I can't even describe to you how beautiful it is that you're getting these two together as your main main energy and it's happening really fast and it's happening really fast and it's passionate and things are aligned so synchronicity synchronistically whether that has to do with whatever images are tied to self-worth for you and self-love for you if you can think of all the social conditioning that has hindered this level of self-worth that you should feel as a sovereign piece of consciousness um so it could be your looks it could be your your finances it could be your career sense of purpose status like whatever external images that you was portrayed to you as a crucial piece of your self-worth as you're restoring the real source of that self-love which is an alignment to your higher self right and this higher level of your soul all of those byproduct of that alignment is going to happen for you align for you really really quickly like it's going to seem almost like as amazing as it feels to have all of these tetris pieces come together if you have ocd 
and before actually all of this felt like such hard work in the past it felt like you trying to get together all of these different factors to help yourself elevate your sense of self-love, elevate your sense of self-worth. It was so much work for your ego to do. It's like, oh, I'm gonna manifest you know, um, this much money and I'm gonna manifest that kind of job in order to feel like this, right? And you've been trying to get that all together and it was so difficult because it's not supposed to come from that place. It's supposed to come internally and then it just, overflows outwards to the physical level and even though you need to take action the most important thing is your internal game like your internal game is 80 percent of of everything i would even say 98 percent of everything and even the action yeah you have to take it on a physical level but the action is almost a uh, halfway point between your internal mindset and your awareness like the action will come naturally when you have the right mindset so if you are taking constantly all of these actions from a place of not having your internal alignment straight then it's gonna feel like this but you got it right and and what's actually hap helping you um get to this full level of integration is this revisiting of previous trauma energies regarding your heart energy um like your heartbreaks and there could be a relationship currently in your life that is triggering all of these memories which is great because that is where you can see this absolute reflection of what's off about your current perspective and the way you are using your mind to generate this state of reality that you're weaving and it's like a new paradigm interesting energy wow all right well so that's the main energy but i think i have to let you know that for this next month you're gonna have as a result of this imagine if you know an egg is hatching this egg is hatching and you're this chick right but until now you've kind of associated yourself with the actual egg and you didn't realize that you're this baby chick so when this is complete well this is com like this is what's happening this month it's incubating this energy is unfolding this month really quickly and so it's almost like this egg shell is breaking and you thought that eggshell was the biggest part of your identity so what you're gonna see happening is that eggshell is going to break and it's gonna freak you out a little bit this lower level of your mind um, you're gonna have these thoughts like you're gonna have to go through a little bit of a fear and this little bit of impatience in terms of Things are not going as you planned. Imagine if you were this chick and you were this egg and you're just daydreaming about the day that you're gonna run around the flower fields with your awesome eggshell, inside of your awesome eggshell, but like you're becoming this bird so you, ha you have no idea what, what the F is going on. And um, so that's what you need to kind of endure. But I want to assure you that this is so temporary this pain that you're feeling as a result of whatever you thought is cr crumbling apart how can any kind of spirit guide or angel tell the baby chicken don't worry about the eggshell breaking because you're actually an entire living bird and it's better than being in an eggshell like how will it communicate that to it all it can try to make you do is have faith and love <laughs> because higher dimensional beings like look their language is completely different right it's it's difficult to find words for for what they have they communicate in frequency so whenever you feel this sense of impatience or apathy i could see you having this apathy actually which really if you look at what's energetically going on it's very hard to understand why you have these bursts of you know anxiety 
guilt, shame, fear, and this sense of like hopelessness. It's because you thought you were this um, something else, something less. Um, but what I see too is the probable timeline is that this partner, whatever I was saying, these, these fulfilling relationships, I think are going to drive you so much into realizing they give you little glimpses of what it's going to feel like, the way they make you feel. Um, and then why is there? Oh. And then in your environment actually is that offer of love that I've been talking about that is going to reflect this. But I think this idea of accepting this love from the environment, whether it comes from multiple different sources or you can only identify one or two, most likely it's coming from so many different channels to offer you this love. And there's a part of you that feels a little bit like afraid of being that vulnerable because when you're accepting this offer, you have to really break open and be vulnerable. And a part of you is fearing this, but like I said, you just have to trust in your higher power and everything else will take care of itself. In your, um, in your hopes and fears, you have this seven of wands, which in this context like really you're fearing that you're gonna have a lot to battle with because you 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 keep comparing the current situation to previous situations that didn't work out for you but it makes no sense because the biggest sign that it's a different scenario is the internal alignment so think of how aligned you were back then when you were experiencing these tumultuous relationships or scenarios and think of how aligned you feel now so that comparison is really how you're going to know that this is a really um, awesome situation that is worthy of your investment of energy and time. Um, in, uh, rather than anything else, don't look for external signs. Look for that internal sign and be trusting that this leap that you made in terms of spiritual growth is a clear indication of why this is a whole new paradigm so your final outcome oh uh, one more thing i need to add is that this guy who feels like they need to fight off some things is actually on a higher ground and if he dis decided to he can just walk away from this whole scene like he could just walk away like he's tripping thinking that he needs to fight off all these things but like what is he doing he's on a different plane that's exactly what you're doing is you're you're on a different plane you're on a different level than these conflicts that you keep experiencing because you think you need to go through them but you're actually not even on the level of the conflicts anymore you have to wake up that you're on a different level and you don't need to deal with these conflicts unless you choose to um, so just remember that you have a choice to walk away from your conflicts and you can do that by simply just tuning into your higher mind. However um, you invoke your higher mind, is it's not up to me, it's up to you. Final outcome is this, um, that breaking of the eggshell that I was talking about. It's awesome because, you know, it goes from this eight of swords, which is just a disgusting energy of like, like really self-imposed tweaks of loops of, of negative frequencies into that just being over, that's done with. I actually enjoy the ten of swords energy because it just... It's over. And whatever you identify as that is not you. Like, if you see, there's a sun sunrise coming. And this guy, you could just see and be like, oh my God, he's dead. It's terrible. But it's like, no, that means that you've transcended that level of yourself. The eggshell has cracked. And so what are you going to do? Cry about the cracked eggshell? Or are you going to enjoy your newfound reality as a bird instead? Um... I'm going to pull a couple of oracle cards for you. Let's see which one. Oh, this one. You know, a lot of the times um, 
these times right now um, getting a lot of readings that have to do with love and relationships and romantic relationships especially just like how yours was a lot tied with heartbreaks and new relationships right um, but I think it's just a clear indication of how a lot of people are transcending their egoic self so naturally their spiritual journey will incorporate other people and also it makes sense um, regarding this Venus um, huge uh, retrograde in Venus that's happening in um, Scorpio right so that's uh, I think that's a, a lot of the reason why a lot of these readings have this romantic thing in it so in terms of your oracle card energy I feel that you're you're coming to a place where this transcendent state of mind is coming into full ripeness to enjoy in your ordinary life so why do I get this message like sometimes I, I'll just go ahead and, and read the cards but I realize that a lot of the times you'll be like where are you getting this message so I just want to clarify that the way I read cards is usually my way of channeling is I like it to be anchored through cards because not only does that help me kind of you know it, it's like an algorithm the cards are like each an algorithm that I have to do the math and um, what, what what's good is you know because you guys see me shuffling and sometimes I'll say the channel the message and then I'll lay out the cards and it's you know it's an interaction between you and I like there's an anchor to our messages together and so sometimes it's clarifying it and I don't know um, I feel like there was a need for me to kind of explain that but anyway um, this this higher level of existence like this you know just just look at this card and what it represents just this realization and enlightenment of existence and how profound existence even is because you know we exist and then we attach so many different levels of narratives to our existence but how many times do people just stop and 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 reflect on what it means to actually exist that existence never ceases if you exist you exist can you remember a time that you didn't exist like can you for a second try to remember a time that you did not exist most likely you remember a time when you adopted this current perspective and you adopted this way of sensory expression and sensory uh interface between you and reality in terms of like when you began your human life and when you started perceiving life from a human perspective sometime between the age of infancy to childhood you started to get programmed with this perspective of viewing life and interacting with our dimension however you've always existed before that and you always exist after that it's just that your perspectives change there's never been a time where you did not exist there's never going to be a time where you cease to exist it's just that your perception changes and your way of interacting with your existence changes so i want you to actually really reflect on this ripeness like this existence and this profound profound reality of existence is actually being riped to um be experienced in your ordinary daily life so you will find in moments even though you'll have times where you feel like so anxious and so fearful and you know having this egoic death and it's just like driving you nuts sometimes you have this background of awareness that you've cultivated otherwise you wouldn't be going through this so i want you to know how strong that level of existence is and how much it's ready to play out in your life and your reality will start reflecting this in your personal level this amount of profound nature of like pure existence as you realize it it's going to be translated into the way your life is in your current subjective experience okay thank you so much for tuning in if you enjoyed this reading if you resonate with me and my messages please let me know by commenting or liking because you know this is going on a different channel and i've never vibed you guys out before so it would really help if you left some feedback to let us know if this is something that you'd like to continue to see so i'm sending you lots of love and i will catch up with you guys later bye